Oh, okay. All right, that didn't work as well. I saw somebody do that in a video and it looked much cooler than I just tried. We'll stick to the old fashioned way. Welcome back. Uh, I'm not going to show you this job too much because I'm actually doing another EICR and I just seem to spend my life doing them now, which I've not got a problem with. It's fine. I'm glad the work's in and touch wood, it'll, uh, it'll keep going. Um, this is just a quick introduction because uh, I just wanted to pop in and say hi, firstly. And uh, yeah, so someone took my door mirror off in my van. Uh, I'll show you here, actually. Yeah, proper bell end, yeah? In the end, I just, I'll put a new one on now, 100 quid later, and it's done. But uh, yeah. It, uh, yeah, took it clean off. So this video that you're about to see was a job we did down in Fulham and it was an EICR we carried out and it was, so we had to do quite a few modifications there. It all went okay, we recorded it and the results are what you're about to see now. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe as well down below and we'll see you in a week's time. Good morning everybody. It's another day, another vlog and I'm trying to gain entry to the flat, which we've got a load of work to do in, but the landlord has given me the wrong set of keys. Well, actually, he hasn't given me the wrong set. This set only gets me through the front door. He didn't give me the set for the internal door. Lock picking lawyer, I am not, but I can get into flats when I need to. Yeah, night latches are great but the inherent design flaw with them is if you can push something up and around, you can basically do that with a bit of jimmying and you can close the lock. So, yeah, <laughs> it's one of my hidden talents. Right, I'm gonna leave that there for a minute. I haven't actually properly seen this place, so I don't know what it needs any ICR doing to it. Well, we'll get to that. I've said this before, I always like to just walk around and have a little look before you actually do any ICR, have a little look around and just see what, see what the property's like. You can actually gain quite a lot of info just by having a little walk around. Okay, what have we got in here? Beautiful baby. We've got this thing here again. We've seen this a couple of times in the past. You've got these little six mil tails. You've got an MI cable and it's just uh, a six mil. So I've got to find where that I've got, to, I've got to see what size fuse that's on downstairs. I've got a feeling you're just gonna have to take both those boards, pull them out and just get rid of all of this completely and just put a nice fresh board in. Oh, another fuse board. Ooh, yeehaw. Yeah, all right, we're here for, we're here for a little bit, I think. Right, what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna go around and unplug everything because the great thing about rentals is that especially if they're like this and they're empty, there are empty properties you can just do all your insulation testing you know you can do it without any fear of damaging anything if you just go around and unplug everything first because for the most part when you do an EICR on any normal place it's very seldom you can do your insulation resistance testing because there's so much stuff plugged in stuff you can't reach stuff you can't get to and it's just you can't do it half the time you end up putting limb because it just or especially between live and neutral but here we can the other good thing is you can also do it on 500 volts as well rather than 250 because half the time when you're doing EICRs in inhabited properties half the time you can't even do it at, you can't even do it at 500 volts because there's just too much shit plugged in which you could potentially damage I know that because I damaged a, uh, the PCB on a boiler once which was an expensive repair that course that Nay went on the other day to do a test and inspection <laughs> The lady there, the woman who was teaching that, she said, "Don't do it." She said, "If it's a, you know, if it's an inhabited property, don't do it." I mean, I agree personally, but 100 ohms. I'd say that's pretty good. Let's crank it up to 500 and see. 870. I'd say that's fine. All right, let's try that board up there. You can actually, if you want to do it quickly, just turn all the breakers on. Leave the main switch off. Just turn all the breakers on. That's a quick way of doing it. I always found. Yeah. Well, good readings. That's unusual. Now, that's where I've got up to. So I've taken that board that was there. That's gone out. We've got rid of that. And those are the cables which were going into that board. And I took this one out. That's now gone. Just taking the tails out of the meter for a second. That was the old sub main which was going to the board upstairs. 
So I've got a nice space there ready to fit a new RCBO board in, but what I was thinking and what I may well do, because I've got to change this board up here, this one just here, right? And what we've currently got here is, uh, oh, I mean, it's pretty rough, but we've basically got, we've got a 2.5 on a 32, and a one mil on a 32. Um, but that's not the end of the world. The problem is we've got that sub main there, which is, I mean, that's just been installed like that from new and I can't leave it like that. So what I was thinking, I might as well rip this board out completely, take it out. If I just put a little adaptable box here, take a bit of trunking, basically just extend them all and then take a piece of trunking down all the way to the floor because the other fuse board is literally just there underneath this ladder. The only thing I don't know about yet is that six mil supply cable. I'm not sure. I've got to look at that and see what actually is that's being fed from downstairs, which I think I might do that now, actually. I'm going to make an assumption that it's through there. Yes, this, uh, this isn't too creepy. An old board, dead. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the beginning of a horror story. All they found was his camera still recording. All right. Well, that answers that question. The answer is no, it's not in there. I'm going to assume it's doing that thing again where it's in the, it's in the shop next door or something, because again, it's a split terraced house. Gas meters are there. All right, that's an investigation for another day. Day two. Welcome back, everybody. It's, uh, it's day two, actually. This day one is what you've just seen, and I'm back here. Nay is now fit and healthy again. Yeah, you've been taken off microphone duty because... I don't need a microphone. Yeah, you're so loud, your mind picks up fine. Taking the fuse board off up there. I've got a little DIN rail and some DIN rail connectors to go in. We'll extend those down behind this lath and plaster. Fuse board will go on. Might have to, I don't know if we're gonna have to put a piece of wood there or something and cut the holes out of the wood. I think we may have to. I think it's advisable, Yeah, isn't it? I think we're gonna have to. That's such a, that's pretty chewed up. Um, so yeah, and this board's going on, and then through there is my little command centre where I'm working from. I'm sort of doing a home office day in there because two of us can't really do this. So we're sort of standing here watching. I'm doing paperwork in there, and Nay's fitting the board. We're fitting one of these fuse box ones again. I quite liked those. They're like a budget board. They're really good. So yeah, we'll update you a little later on. I'm gonna get some value for my fucking shillings here. We're up here lifting the floor so I can drag some cables down because Naomi's just downstairs. Great Scott. Oh, I fucking hate lifting floorboards. There we go. It's when you wish you didn't see what was under the floorboards, but now you've seen it. Yeah, so that fuse board is just up there. And I'm just gonna run, there's actually a bit of 50 mil trunking downstairs. I'm just gonna run it down here, drill a hole through the floor because Naomi's literally just here below us. Oh dear. Now, trunk is gone on the wall. I've had to chamfer it around the, um, what's this called? The skirting, that's the one. Uh, so I've had to chamfer it around that, drilled a hole through the floorboard, and Naomi is literally just that. In fact, go down and go down and see what she's up to. It'd be rude not to. There she is in all her glory. The board looks pissed, but it actually isn't. The board is level, it's just this cupboard is on the piss. So that's how we've done the, well, that's how Nay's done the junction box to extend all the cables. So we've just used those little adapter, those little DIN rail connectors. And then we just extend them down into that board there. Happy days. Fair play, Nay. You're right in the fucking way. No, it's fine. Let's move around you. That's quite a cool little device from uh, a company called Rumpotech, Rumpotech or something. You basically put that, put your cable on there, and you just spool off what you want. But it's handy if you don't want to get the whole cable horse out from the van. You can, if you're just doing odds and ends like we're doing. Quite like it. <laughs> it's quite a cool, quite a cool little device. I'll tell you what, I'm not a carpet fitter by trade, but with a bar, it's amazing what you can do. You wouldn't even know that's been up. To be fair, it's neater than, <laughs> neater than some of the carpet layers. I've no lay carpet. If you just take your time with one of them, you can pretty much lay it as, as you took it up. It's all right. I've got to get those little fire band clips to go inside. I've got to do that, and then I can put the lid back on. Now it's probably a good time to, in fact, I'll connect that up at there first, and then I'll go and see what, see what Nia's up to downstairs like. Finished in my northern accent. Right, Nia, I'm coming down. How's my little cherub doing? Cherub's all right. I think that's a pretty neat effort from, no, but it's neat. I like it. Cheers, doll. It's Appreciate it. Sure. Gotta put that bit of trunking lid back on, and Bob Trunk will finally your arm, and then you can do the board tomorrow. 
Yeah. Sarah's here tomorrow on site, so I'm going to be playing. I'm so excited! I'm not. Why are you not excited? I just like working on my own, is the honest answer. <laughs> if I had a house, it would be in a cabin about a thousand miles away from anybody. That would be what I would like. I'd be happy with that. The next clip you see will be tomorrow, because I've got to head off now, because I've got to go and pick Sarah up from the station. Day three. Welcome back, everybody. It's day... It's actually day two and a half, really. It's not day three. Because I came here on Tuesday, I did a couple of hours on my own and then they and me were here yesterday and we're here again today. Sarah is here today, she's gone out to go and get coffee for us. We were talking about masks and I've, I've actually had, I should probably throw this one away because I've, I've had this one since April and it's, it is really quite, I've actually got more chance of getting an infection off this mask than I have actually catching coronavirus. So apparently we're not allowed to make fun, we're not allowed to joke about, has anyone heard this? We're not allowed to joke about coronavirus at all. Was it you who told me that? No. We're, not, we're not allowed to, you're not allowed to, I think it's in schools, you're not allowed to make fun or jokes about coronavirus. I'm not surprised in school, but we're not in school, so... I don't know, it's turning into a bit sort of North Korea style, isn't it? We're not allowed to make, I know it's a shit situation, but at least try and make light of it. Um, right, I'm actually gonna try and do something useful while Sarah's gone, so I'm gonna try and finish upstairs quickly and we'll be back in two seconds. Right, I had to pick this trunking up from Groupie just down the road and are you alright down there, Nay? Seem to find this whole thing rather amusing. Do you want a fucking pay cut? <sighs> we got Sarah here today. Why did she say cut? What? I'm trying to fucking record! You might just keep it like just two minutes! This is the second piece of content I managed to record today. At least we've got to make it look like we've got our act together. Right, as I was saying, I picked up this piece of, oh, I fucking lost my train of thought now. I picked up this piece of trunking from Groupie, and when you buy trunking, of course, I'm using all round band. If you get in here, you might be able to see what I mean. There's a bit of this. I've had to use this all round band for a fire fixing, right? And I've just put it in like that because I wanted to get, you know, the uh, 18th edition fire clips, and you can get them for different sizes of trunking. I said, have you got any fire clips? Nah, don't stop them. I'm like, right, okay. So this will just do, for, I mean, it's only two cables, a bit of all-round band. It'll work. I just left this off just to show you, and not a lot to see up there. I've got to put a link in on the bridges underneath the, those little connectors. And that was the other thing I wanted to say. It's very tempting when you're putting on lid like this, it's super tempting to bash it with the palm of your hand like that to push the lid on. And I've spent many a year doing that and this wrist just always hurts now whenever you put pressure on it. Normally it's when I'm doing the motor vlogs, I notice it, when you're putting the pressure on your wrist, it, this, my right wrist just really hurts and it's just years of doing that. And I didn't actually notice it until it was somebody in the comments who said, stop, because I was doing that on camera, I was, I was pushing the lid on like that. And you're supposed to do it like that, just gently just press it on, but yeah, don't hit it on using the palm of your hand because you just it just knackers your wrist. As I can attest to, I did an Instagram feed the other day uh, where people were asking questions, and somebody asked me the question of what do you think of these lap fittings, these lap down lights? I'll try and leave it on the screen. And um, there were a couple of people, because people then start commenting below, and some people were saying that the usual thing, whenever anybody talks about budget fittings, you always get the brigade of people that just say it's garbage and you can not use Collingwood and all this crap. You can buy these ones for about, I think they're about 10 or a down like they're really not bad money. I, I refuse to accept this concept that just because something's cheap, it's automatically bad. I'm not saying that everything that LAP make are great because it isn't. There's some of the stuff that really is I don't like. But these down lights, these fully, can, these, these all-in-one down lights, I really quite like them. And there's a couple of reasons why. A, you've got nice solid springs on them. You've got a nice wide bezel, so it can cover anything from like a 64 mil hole right up to an 80 mil hole. Because some of the down lights have got a really thin, there's, you've got to get just the right hole, otherwise it won't fit. These ones have got a nice lip, so they, they're good for replacing a multitude of old down lights. And the last thing is you've got a really nice big terminal block. And then if you open it up, inside is just the piano key connectors, which I really like because you've got lots of room in there. It's a nice, some of the down lights you see, and the boxes, honestly, are half the size of this, and there's just no room to terminate anything. But these ones are nice, and then you, you know, all maintenance free. You click it back in and that's it. In reality, the problem is because that's because that's lap, you'll get people who are like, they'll just automatically diss it. They won't even give it a chance. They'll just, they won't like it. But the truth of the matter is, if that said Collingwood and it was a tenor, everybody would say it's amazing because it's lap, it just gets a bad name, which I disagree with. You know, for a budget fitting, these are great for rentals. Landlords love these. They're just great because they're just quick, easy to replace. People like them, but they are a budget fitting, you know? 
Um, and they do have a place, you know, these budget fittings do have a place in the market. So I refuse to accept this thing that like, and I can see, I can really feel it in the comments that people will be like, these are get the garbage. But I think that's just, somebody says it and then because someone says it and then somebody else sees it, they just, they automatically write it and then you get 50 people all saying it and actually they're just saying it for the sake of saying it. But I really quite like them as a budget fitting. They're really not bad at all. Um, they definitely get a, you know, they get a bad rep and they're not that bad. If at any point during the course of this video you feel like becoming a subscriber, just click below and let's debate. We don't have to argue. Let's have a healthy debate and click like. It's just down here. Well, uh, here we are. Um, it's quite a bit of time later, but I'm now finished. A very nice job, obviously. So I won't take all the credit for your board. No, Nay's actually done this, to be fair. The only thing we have got to do is this blank space here. I've got to fill it with some fire foam. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's I'm sitting on the fence, not sure whether you've got to use this or not in the back of a board. Because the problem is the knockouts on the board are a factory size. You can't, you just knock them out and the seals they give perfectly fill those holes. But like if you're mounting it to a wooden back or lath and plaster or something, I mean, you've just got a great big hole, which you've got to, you've got to do something with it. So I'm just going to fill it as neatly as I can. This, uh, the other two are quite small, but this one here is quite a large hole. So I'm just going to fill it with some of that. I'm actually a bit begrudged using these cans because once you use like 10% of it, you then have to throw the rest of the can away, which is really wasteful. But I've got one of the foam guns, but I have the, it's blocked. I just haven't unblocked it yet. So it'll give me two minutes. We'll pop that in. I've actually just been talking about this off cam and I think the only other way you could have done it is if you'd fitted a piece of fireboard, like plasterboard the fireboard, if you'd have fitted that and then just cut the holes in the back just big enough for the cables to come through. That's the only way I, other way I could see you could do it. I mean, you could question whether you even need fire foam or not, because if you fit the board correctly, it's not really going to be a fire hazard. Half the reason is because if people don't tighten the connections up well enough and they get loose, they arc heat and that's where the fire starts. But if you actually fit it correctly, it's not. There's argument on both sides, but I'm actually not sold on fire foam. I'm really not sold on it because if you do have to pull another cable and you're buggered, aren't you? But again, what's the likelihood? I don't know. A piece of fireboard is the only way I can see her doing it in future. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's do some testing. Right, I'm going to be a really good boy and I'm doing the certificate now. I'm really trying to get into this habit of doing tickets on site rather than you end up having six to do over the weekend. So, all right, description of work. Remove three old DB units and extend fresh cable into the new metal clad RCBO board situated on the first floor. The old cables are connected via DIN rail connectors inside new weatherproof enclosures. On one of my previous inspections, not the last one I've just done, the one before where I had it in person, the fella who came out and inspected me, uh, he just picked a couple of BICRs that I did from, because they're all loaded on the NIC's portal. And he just took two of them at random. And he went through them and he was a big believer in like just putting tons of information in the general comments boxes and stuff. Just like just put as much as you can in there because that's essentially what saves your ass. If anything goes wrong, that's what, you know, you, you put a, so much description of what you have done, what you haven't done and all that sort of stuff. Um, and just to give you a gauge, this is what I put. Um, so this is comments of the, on the existing installation. I've just put... Existing install is wired to a previous version of BS7671 and upon inspection appears to be in fair order for age. Some accessories have seen higher wear and tear than usual due to being a rental property, but overall are still in a serviceable condition. Uh, I'd recommend a repeat inspection in five years and a visual inspection every 12 months. So that's what I put. That's it. There we go. So that's socket two. Upstairs. Upstairs front bedroom socket. Just, that's it. There only appears to be one socket. All the others are all on. One eternity later. 0.62, dull. These QTEC adapters are good if anyone's ever used them. They're good for things like pendants and stuff. If you just want to get a quick reading, you can just click it straight into the, you just click it straight in. It just saves you having to do that whole dance with three leads up here. It's quite a quick, quite a quick way of doing it. 25 milliseconds and that's it, done. You just move on to the next one. But they're really good. That's actually for a GU10. Uh, so those are good for, you know, the track lights and kitchens and stuff. If you don't want to have to take the decorative fittings down, because they're always a ball late to get them back up, you can just take one of the GU10s out, click that in, put your test leads into there, and you can test without having to remove the fitting. So it's quite a good way of, uh, if you're trying to get, you know, if you want to get through an inspection quick, you know, just for speed, they're very good. I got a, actually, a bit of, a bit of feedback from the, the old subscribers. I got to pick i got to pick Penny up from the airport because she's coming back from Austria. She comes back on Wednesday. By the time this video goes out, she'll already be back. But I've got a, 
I go to pick her up and she's been gone a month to see relatives, weddings and all that sort of jazz. And I've got to do something to surprise her when I pick her up. I can't just turn up and be like, I'm here, babe. I've got to do something more than that. So like me and the camera guy were like, go to the airport, single rows, you know, cheeky rows. But beyond, <laughs> beyond that, I, I don't know, you know, take her home, cheeky champagne on the table ready. She's been away yeah, like candles. five weeks. I've got to do something. I can't, I, I was going to go to the airport, single rows. Yeah, cute. What else? That's it. I don't, I don't <laughs> no, I'm not sure what else to, to do. Get my bags. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Leave it below. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this is what I'm doing this weekend. I'm converting my fish tank over to sand tank. I'm getting in the picture because we've only got one mic. Oh, yeah. So this is going to be my cute tank. These are my fishies. That's called Fry. That's Nemo. That's Shark Bag. <laughs> Then, nice. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not finished. No, she's not. All right, okay. And then, basically, I had a cleaning suction thing, but I was having to suck it with my mouth, and no one likes to do that and have fish crap in their mouth. So we got an electric one, but I don't know how trustworthy I am with it because I did by mistake suck up a shrimp, and it is now dead. Right, it's dead. Yes. We should try and end. The, we should try and end the video on that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs>